Hi everyone, my name is Jun Yuzu. I'm currently a PhD student at MIT CSAIL, GCIE group, working with Professor Stephanie Muller. My research focuses on creating interactive objects for which all functions are directly integrated with the form and fabricated in one go. Today I'm presenting my new project, a 3D design environment for both object form and electronic function, Morph Sensor. Morph Sensor is a 3D electronic design tool that enables designers to morph existing sensor modules of predefined 2D shape into freeform electronic component arrangement that better integrate with the 3D shape of a physical prototype. Let me show you the Morph Sensor in more details. In the last decades, the availability of sensor modules that are easy to use and affordable has increased substantially, which makes them perfect for prototype interactive objects. However, those sensor modules come in two-dimensional predefined shape, usually in square, which makes them hard to integrate with the 3D dimensional shape of a physical prototype. This can lead to artistic sacrifices inaccurate sensor readings and user interface layouts created not desirable for interaction. In the past, HCI researchers have invested how to reduce these issues by providing 3D editing environments that enable designers to place sensor modules alongside of the 3D geometry. For example, plane to form and VUI kit. They allow you designers to place sensor module on the geometry, but not to edit in the sensor module itself, which limits the level of integration possible between form and function. However, they are off a great start point. More recently, some commercial EDA tools, such as Autodesk Fusion 360 and Altium Designer, have taken this a step further by integrating electronic design and mechanical design and allow 3D visualization of the PCB board. However, they only allow the visualization after the electronic design and still treat editing of the electronic design and object design as two separate workflows, which prevent users from effectively design electronic function in the context of a prototype's shape. Once you have the object design finished, you still have to fabricate it. For this, some projects like SurfKit, Curveboard, and circuit sticker explored how to integrate the whole sensor module or breadboard components into the prototype object. For Morph Sensor, we got inspired by the circuit sticker and further developed what we called the Bigfoot, which are essentially slightly larger footprints for SMD components. Compared to the circuit sticker, instead of manually designing through EDA tools for each sensor modules, the system will automatically generate the big foods for each SMD component, which lower the electronic design degree and further automate the fabrication pipeline. In order to address both the 3D editing environment and rapid function gaps between the optic form and electronic function design, we present Morph Sensor, a 3D electronic design tool for reforming sensor modules. Morph Sensor contains two parts. Morph Sensor contains two parts a 3D electronic design tool for designing electronic function in the context of physical prototype, and the fabrication pipeline to fabricate the resulting morphed sensor. Let me walk you through the morph sensor system by an interactive soldering iron that detects the level of smoke in the air by an air quality sensor and warns you of the bad air quality so that you can take a break. Let's look at the morph sensor 3D editor. We will start by importing the sensor module, in this case, an air quality sensor. The system extracts the sensor information from the board and its corresponding schematic file, and then sequentially creates the board and the individual electronic components as a set of 3D models. We want to measure air quality, and since the soldering frames are created by the tip of the iron, we want to place the air quality sensor close to the soldering tip. Morph sensor helps me this by highlighting which part on the module does the actual sensing. You can snap and arrange individual electronic components on the 3D model using common 3D editing tools. After placing the active sensing part 
want to move all the releasing passive components onto my prototype, I can use Move Sensor's auto placement function. During the entire editing process, Move Sensor maintains logic connectivity by tracking the logically connected pin locations and display a 3D air wire between the pins along the prototype geometry in real time. After positioning the electronic components, we're connecting physical wires based on logic air wires. Once wires join to the point at the end of their wire, it is complete and connection is established. We'll go ahead and finish the wiring. We can still freely change the component location and rotation at any given time. We're able to expand the design anytime by importing additional sensors and components. In this case, a microcontroller for programming their quality sensor and an LED to display the warning signal. Same as before, we will snap newly added components onto the model and connect them with the remaining circuit. When wire crosses, Move Sensor automatically adds a wire jumper, allowing both wire to be placed sufficiently. We will then export design for fabrication using a lasso tool for marking up the desired area on the prototype. Move Sensor then converts the 3D circuit into a 2D projection with surface unrolling and export it as SVG file. Let's look at how we fabricate the morphed sensor. We developed a rapid fabrication technique that based on circuit stickers and extended with prefabricated PCB footprints, the Bigfoot, which are essentially slightly bigger SMT footprints for better connection. We'll first inject print the export circuit, put down some double-sided tape on the back for later object attachment, take out the Bigfoot, soldering the corresponding components onto the Bigfoot. Then we'll attach the ECAT tape to the back of the Bigfoot, which are the conductive only through Z axis. We'll attach the components to the circuit, and there you have it, the fabricated morph sensor. We'll go ahead and cut out the sensor, attach it to the object. Voila, this is your interactive object prototype rapidly built. With silver inject printed circuit, you will be able to fabricate most of the interactive object design, as some of the examples showing in the image. If you want to go even further, for even smaller and compact geometry designs like the string design, or some dedicated component and sensing layout, like this Utah teapot, where we only want to sense the data at the handle of the pot. Move sensor provides an alternative fabrication method with conductive ink pad and circuit stencil to accommodate these more complex geometry and designs like sharp edges and doubly curved surfaces. We'll first laser cut the export SVG file into a circuit stencil, and then use it to directly draw the circuit on the object. Similar as before, we will attach the components with Bigfoot onto the drawn circuit. This method would requires more labor work, but in exchange has more complex design available. So it's like a trade-off for you to choose between the two fabrication methods. Now that you know how the Morph Sensor system works, let me show some of the use cases that we built using Morph Sensor. This is a pair of glasses that detects excessive blue lights exposure that are the user. As you can see in the video clip, once detect the blue light, the LED lights turned red, and then users will switch to a sunglass to protect the eye. This is the same interactive object that we shown for the system walkthrough. It's a soldering iron detects the level of smoke in the air. This is achieved by an air quality sensor, and the LED will blink to warn users of bad air quality, which means you should probably take a break. This is a 95 mask detects if the substrate is contaminated and alarms user when it needs to be replaced. This design contains a humidity sensor, microcontroller, and an LED. We also designed a pair of AirPods that can not intrusively measure user behavior because they are such widely used objects 
and have definitely seen people just bury them without even playing music. This is achieved through an accelerometer sensor. As you can see in the video clip, the resulting MOP sensor works just fine and nicely integrated with the AirPod chain. Finally, we also implement this weather aware rings to give users stressing advice. This is done through the second fabrication method with the hand drawing conductive pens. It contains a temperature sensor. With all the examples presented, you must be wondering, how do we make sure all the resulting of the sensor works? What are the evaluations we perform? Well, as a matter of fact, we evaluate the resulting morph sensor in the first and the following two parts. First, the conductivity of the morph sensor circuit, and then evaluate the effectiveness of assembled morph sensor. Let's look at the conductivity of the circuit first. For the interprinted fabrication method, we print out 20 sets of interprinted traces with different width and the same lengths varying from 0.1 to 1 millimeter. The resistance are pretty good, even for the 0.1 millimeter traces. But in order to balance between the performance and the artistic effect, we select 0.5 millimeter. We conduct a similar test for the hand joint traces, which is that on the 3D printed white PLAs with the same lens and the ranging of the width. Again, the resistance are still really low, and it works. Similar as before, we select 0.6 millimeter to have a good looking and also function circuit. With the error tolerance of the modern electronics, this extra resistance of both fabrication method is acceptable for prototyping designs with low power electronics. Let's move on to the effectiveness of the morph sensor. We all know that components work individually and the circuit work, but how about them? assembled together. For this part, we first adapted from the industrial test and performed the in-circuit test, which contains the continuity test, voltage test, and resistance test. We then further performed the functional test, which contains 10 one-minute individual operations. We compare our morph sensor versus the ground shoes off-the-shelf sensor purchased from SparkFound. We perform this test on both digital and analog signals. This is a result from the digital signals. We use two digital temperature sensors, a static room temperature, and we recorded in total 609 samples at a rate of one per second. The average difference between the readings is around 0 0.06 Celsius and the conserved state max of 0 0.3 Celsius. And the variance of the difference between the signal is at 0 0.02. So in short word, pretty good. We performed a similar thing for the analog signals with two analog ambient light sensors under an LED lens. With in total 300 samples at a rate of two per second, we achieve an average percentage difference of only 0.6% and the maximum difference about 4%. As you can see in the graph, the maximum difference is amount around four lux and give you a reference in the normal office um, environment, the lux is around 500. So again, pretty good. Now that I showed all these technical data, let's discuss some of the limitation of the morph sensor system and potential future work directions. First is the limited flexible prefabricated footprints. The morph sensor system takes both automatic generated Bigfoot and manually generated design ones. Although manually design ones, as you can see in the image, can be more compact than automatic generated ones, it still requires some additional spaces which might interfere with the object shape. We we'll also like to optimize the morph sensor system for traditional flexible PCB manufacturing. Now users have the option to outsource the system output files to fabricate as a flexible PCB. However, the system is optimized for rapid prototyping DIY boards for now. To further accommodate the traditional flexible PCB manufacturing, some other functionalities like multi-layer wiring are need to be implemented. 
we will also like to further automating electronic design knowledge. For example, we can maintain spatial relationships through grouping or ensuring minimum distance between interfering components for users to even lower the electronic design boundary. We're considering eliminating redundant components in multi-sensor designs by merging the circuit of multiple sensor modules together to further save spaces and for better integration. Let me go ahead and conclude my talk. We presented MorphSensor, a 3D electronic design environment for both physical prototype form and electronic functions. We demonstrated a rapid fabrication technique that based on circuit sticker and so for inject printing to fabricate resulting morph sensors. We further demonstrate a number of use cases designed through morph sensor and evaluate their effectiveness. If you like this work, I also present a paper at CHI 2020 this year on curve boards, 3D breadboards that serve as prototyping platform for functions in the context of object form. With that, I would like to end my talk. I would like to thank my collaborators, Winnie, Jamin, Leon, Jackson, Mark, Michael, and Professor Stephanie Muller for their devotion for the project. This project is funded by National Science Foundation. Thank you.